another real quick little project to sell in my booth. Randy made these signs out of some scrap barn wood and some scrap lumber we had around for the frame. And um, I love the barn wood color, but with what I'm doing, I need to stencil through some lettering and I want the lettering to be white and it's not gonna show up very well. So I'm going to darken this. First thing I've done is I've taped around the whole frame because I just don't want to get stain on the frame. And let's see, I didn't get quite there. There would just be more to have to do and I like the lighter color wood. So I'm using my stain and seals. This is from Faux Effects. This is a gel stain, water-based. They are very old. In fact, this one needs some reconstituting with some water. I mean, it's super thick. I don't know if you can't probably even see it. But I don't mind using it thick because all I'm doing is a dry brush technique. So I've just got a little on my chippy brush here and just lightly going to hit it here and there. I don't care if it gets thicker and spots like that because that's just going to make it look better. Now I especially want to concentrate making sure I have plenty of dark on the top piece and the bottom piece because that's where the wording is going to go. And then in the middle is where a garden object is going to go. So just a little dab will do you your first. I'm sorry, I'm sorry about the lighting. It's very cold outside and overcast. And I didn't want to be out there in the cold. Plus I'm just wearing my robe because I'm doing this early in the morning. All right, that's enough of that one. Next, I'm using Golden Oak, which when we had my store, we called this Baby Poop, because it sure looks like it. Exactly that color. Now you're all going, ew. Blending this in a little bit more here in a second. I'll show you. I've already done one. I've got three to do, so this is number two. Baby poop. <laughs> number two. Right, that's enough of that one. Now, my favorite color of all the stains and seals. Uh, is American Walnut and I'm just about out of it. I had reconstituted it with quite a bit of water a while back. Just kind of scrubbing it in. Now they do make a greenish stainless seal but I'm, I'm out, I don't have any of that. So, I mixed up, let's see, some turquoise and some earth green. These are also full fix colorants, acrylics, and I love them. But I wanted kind of a greeny blue. I'm just gonna use the same brush. purposeful in where I'm putting these spots. Well, here you go. All slightly different, but the same color family. 
So I'll let this dry and then I will show you what I'm going to be doing next. One, two, three. Well, I have my sayings in my Cricut and I'm ready to make it. So now I set my material to vinyl. I'm going to give it more pressure. We'll come over here and see the flashing light. It's telling me to load it. The mat is loaded and now the button to make it is flashing. And if you're a bit of a monkey like me, the weeding is the favorite part. You use this little tool to weed out. Now I'll add the transfer tape and get it all ready to go. Well, it's the next morning and I took my little sander here and I knocked them back, knocked that color back, sanded them a little bit smoother. And now it really looks old, I think. All right, well I used my transfer tape on the top and then peeled the backing off the black and put it down on my wood and peeled the clear transfer tape up. The next step after that, uh, when I'm stenciling, I always like to go over the stencil with a polyurethane. So I used a crystal clear matte water-based polyurethane. And I'm ready to start stenciling, but I know that I'm messy. And when you're stenciling, you're, you're focused on the stenciling part. So I need to very carefully tape around all of this so that I don't make a mess. You'll see why in just a second. and a round brush. You want to put some paint on your round brush and then you want to use a paper towel and take most of it off. What you're doing is dry brushing. So the first thing I do is I just come in here and very lightly pounce. I'm trying to kind of glue that down. The polyurethane helps, but I'm trying to prevent bleed. So you can already see how much paint I've already gotten. I got it on that, wonderful. Trying to prevent bleed. So rather than swirling, I pounce the first time. And it's a little cold outside, which is why I'm in here doing it in my kitchen. This is gonna dry quickly because it's so little paint. Okay, while that one dries, I'll go to my next two signs and then I'll this will be dry enough for me to start over again. Back to the first one now. Pretty dry. So now, rather than pouncing, make sure my brush is pretty dry. I'm going to gently and lightly swirl. The 
the pouncing that first time around helps to glue down the stencil and the swirling method you you know you get more paint on the board and again we're just hoping that we don't have bleed if we do I'll show you how I fix that a little bit on these wooden signs it's pretty easy to do I'm not pressing down hard at all especially when I start out because there's more paint on the, on the brush You can get these little round brushes everywhere, but um, it would be like in this by the stenciling section, paint stenciling part of a craft store. All right, at this point, after this swirling technique, I need to let it dry uh, probably a good 30 minutes. I'll wash my brush out and come back for coat number three. Hopefully that will be the last coat. Got me a new paper towel here. It's dry and we're ready for the last coat. Again, I'm going to swirl. I like to try to get complete coverage with this third coat. And you don't have to do this, but I go ahead and pull the stencil while it's wet. You can wait until it's dry, because you do have to be pretty careful not to get this wet paint that's on all this tape and stuff anywhere on your board. I tend to get it more on my body than I do on the board. But the reason I like to go ahead and pull it wet is because if it has bled, this last little coat especially, it's easier to get off than if you let it dry. Here's some dogs coming. Okay, y'all, go on outside. You're crazy. You're in your morning crazy. Outside, come on. Oh, and you're nasty. Come on. Okay, back with quiet. moment of truth. I use my little weeding tool here. Let's see if you can see it. To get started, it helps me pull it up. a little paper, clean paper towel here. Come in here with my weeding tool.
there is a tiny bit of bleed. Let's see if I can zoom in to show you. Now this is zoomed way in, tighter than uh, you can really see it, but I can take this little weeding tool here and just kind of scratch at it. Way I can clean up anything I don't like. But overall, it did pretty well considering this was pretty rough wood. Most people wouldn't even be that picky, but. It looks good now. Let's pull the bottom half. Now sometimes there are places that it didn't quite get covered, like here, 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 here. So let me get my tiny paintbrush. And I can easily fix that, but I'm not uh, using just a whole lot of paint on the brush because I don't want it to be a brighter white than everywhere else. So it's just a teeny tiny little bit. I dig it. I'll do the other two, let them dry completely, and show you the final thing. All right, well, the last thing I need to do is attach my garden tools, which I'm using some hot glue first. And I'm only placing it where it's gonna touch the back, because I've already looked. centered because it's hard for me to do it off to the side. I gotta stick my head in the way. Yeah, I think that's good. Now, in addition to the hot glue, because hot glue does kind of break down over time, I take my Gorilla Glue, I tilt it up. We'll see if other folks like it and we'll buy it. And remember, bye and have a good one.